guys, it's Shira from Woodshop Diaries, and today I'm going to share with you how I built this bookshelf with hidden storage drawers. Now, I've staged this as a bookshelf, but in my mind, I think it would work perfect in a pantry where you could put your like cereal boxes and bread or whatever on the shelves and then put your canned goods in the drawers. Or you could just use these secret drawers for your Oreo stash or candy stash that you like to keep hidden away from everybody else in the house. But no matter how you plan to use this, it was really fun to put together and I've got the plans for you linked below. But if you're ready to see how it all came together, let's go. While the storage in this bookshelf isn't really that hidden, at first glance, it's not really that obvious. If you didn't know any better, you may just think that these are some really thick shelves, but the shallow drawers are a great way to store away remotes in a living room or a secret candy stash in a pantry or whatever else that you may wanna hide away. To get started, I pulled out a sheet of three quarter inch plywood and began cutting down my sides and shelves. I used my circular saw and Craig Rip Cut to rip two side panels from the sheet and a strip to cut the shelves from. If you're interested in how I cut down my plywood sheets, I'll leave a link to a guide in the video description below. I brought these strips over to the miter saw and trimmed them down to length to give me two side panels, four shelves, and two thin strips to go at the top as supports. The front edges of the side panels will be covered with trim later, but I did apply edge banding to the front edges of the shelves here because they will be exposed when the drawers are open. Edge banding is always optional, but it does make the plywood edges look nice and finished. I also cut a piece of 1x6 board to serve as the trim at the top of the cabinet. You could use plywood here instead, but I had actually considered cutting a decorative arch in this piece, so I used solid 1x6. I ended up deciding against the arch, as you can see, but you could definitely give that a try if you wanted. To assemble the shelf cabinet, I drilled 3 quarter inch pocket holes into the ends of the 1x6, the thin top support strips, and into the ends of the shelves. I laid one of my side panels out and marked where to line up the shelves. I've detailed these measurements in the plans linked below. Then I installed the four shelves at these marks using pocket hole screws so that they were flush along the back edge. At the top, I installed the one by six so that it was flush across the front edge of the side panel. Then I added the two top supports, one right behind the one by six and the other at the back corner. I marked the same shelf locations on the second side panel, then flipped it over and repeated, securing the shelves, trim, and top supports using pocket hole screws. I pulled out a sheet of three quarter inch plywood to cut the back panel from. I set aside and used these leftover pieces for the drawer bottoms later. Before attaching, I double checked the diagonals of this panel to make sure that it was square. Then I stapled it in place. If you didn't have a stapler, you could also just glue and brad nail or just screw this piece in place. Next up was the drawer slides. The shelves were slightly shallower than the side panels, so I used a scrap piece of wood to help me install these slides flush to the front edge of the shelves, and I used another scrap block to make sure that these were installed about an inch and a half below each shelf. I installed four 14 inch slides on one side, then flipped it over and installed the other four on the opposite side the same way. For more information on installing drawer slides, I will link a detailed guide in the video description. Now it was time to install the trim. I already had 1x6s in the shop, so I just ripped these down for my trim, but you could also use pre-cut 1x2s and 1x3s for this instead. For the front of the shelf, I glued up two 1x2s to kind of wrap around each corner. Now you don't have to glue these together first, you could just glue and nail them directly to the shelf instead. However, I thought it would be a little easier to line everything up this way, but either way works fine.
Once the glue in these corners were dry, I glued and nailed a 1x3 along the back edge of the shelf, then I glued and nailed the corner piece in place. Notice that the full 1x2 goes on the side and the shorter piece goes on the front. The inside edge of the shelf should be flush all the way down so as not to interfere with the drawer slide's ability to slide in and out freely. And finally, I cut to fit a couple of 1x6s to go here at the top and the bottom. I did this for both sides. And now it was time for my favorite part, the drawers. If you followed along for any length of time, you probably know that I love building drawers. I have a ton of plywood scraps, so I rummaged through my scrap piles to find enough pieces to cut the drawer boxes from and rip these into four inch wide strips. Then I adjusted my blade height on the table saw to about a quarter of an inch deep, and I cut quarter inch dados into the sides of these pieces by running them through once, then adjusting the rip fence and making a second cut, then I adjusted back a little and cut out the middle. This will give me a dado to insert quarter inch plywood drawer bottoms into. You could also use a router or a dado blade instead if you wanted. I trimmed the drawer box pieces to length and once I had everything to make four identical drawers, I applied edge banding to the top edges. And as always, edge banding is optional, but it really makes these edges look nice and clean. Then I drilled pocket holes into the front and back drawer pieces and assembled using pocket hole screws. Before adding the fourth side, I slid the quarter inch plywood bottom into the dados. If you're interested in learning more about building drawer boxes, I've got a detailed guide that I will link in the description that you can check out. After I had all four drawers made, I moved on to install them into the shelf. I screwed these directly into the slides that were already installed and I used some scrap one by pieces and some clamps to help me install these so that they were three quarter inch below each shelf. I put two screws in the slides on each side, then I used the little tabs on the slides to remove the drawer. I added the third screw in the back end of the slides on each side, then slid the drawer back in place. The front of these drawers should be flush to the front of the shelves, and I did this for all four drawers. For the drawer fronts, I used 3 quarter inch plywood, but you could also use 1x6s for this if you'd rather. I cut four pieces to fit and applied iron-on edge banding on all sides. I held these in place so that they were just barely below the top edge of the shelf, then clamped it on the bottom and screwed these in from the inside. I repeated this for all four drawers, but there wasn't enough clearance below the bottom drawer to clamp. So for this, I used a scrap piece of quarter inch plywood to position the drawer front a quarter inch from the floor. All that's left now is the top. I cut a piece of three quarter inch plywood to fit on the top so that there was about an inch and a quarter overhang on the sides and the front. I applied iron on the edge banding, then placed this top on the shelf. Before securing, I made sure that the overhang was equal on both sides and the back edges were all flush. Then I used one and a quarter inch screws through the top supports to attach. To dress this up a little, I added some small crown molding along the top. This is totally optional and you can definitely use whatever type of molding that you wanted. I marked and cut each piece to fit and nailed it in place. I'll link a guide to crown molding in the description below if you'd like to learn more about how to cut and install it. Now, I had actually planned to leave this gap between the front trim and the crown molding open, but after installing it, I decided that it looked kind of weird. So I cut some scrap one by two and tapped it in to fill this space. I secured the crown and this piece together with a few brad nails to finish it up. After putting all the nail holes and giving it a final sanding, I gave the shelf a coat of Minwax Early American Stain and then a few coats of Minwax Polycrylic to seal it. And it was complete. This bookshelf was such a fun project that's big in size but not really overly complicated to put together. The storage drawers are a great addition to give it a little extra versatility without looking out of place. I really hope you enjoyed watching this project as much as I enjoyed building it, and don't forget that if you'd like to grab the plans to build your own, I've linked them below. If you enjoyed the video and want to see what's next, be sure to subscribe to the channel to keep up with all the projects to come. Thanks so much for watching, friends, and until next time, happy building!